Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. Amen. You know, it is a little different today, of course, uh, with our pews being empty. But I'm trying to look out there at all you smiling back at me, and you beautiful faces that are listening to us and joining with us on Sunday morning. I read an article uh, in the United Methodist Discipleship uh, page by Derek Weber, who said that uh, preachers in the Orthodox religion do not preach on Sundays, on Easter, I mean, uh, on Easter Sundays. That they stand in the pulpit and tell jokes on Easter. Interesting. After all, Easter is a day of laughing at death. If you think about it, Jesus stood on the other side of the grave and he said, Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, grave, where is your sting? And so Jesus stood on the other side of the grave and in a sense, he laughed at death itself. And so I think it is appropriate to laugh and to have joy on Easter. But yet some may say, how can we laugh and how can we have joy in such a time as this? When we know people are hurting, we know people are dying, and we know uh, that this pandemic has just turned our lives upside down. How can we have joy in such a time as this? And I'm reminded of the children of Israel when they were taken away into a strange land in captivity and made as slaves. And their captors, knowing that they were people of songs, said to them one day, sing a song of Zion for us. And they wanted them to sing. But they said that we hung our harps upon the willows and we wept when we remembered Zion. And they said, how can we sing in such a strange land? And I guess we kind of feel that today in a, in, a, in a way. This is a strange land that we're living in, a strange life. And it's hard to sing when we know that there's so much hurt going on in the world. We are reminded of that first Easter when Mary arrives at the tomb in John. And there she is in the darkness of that first Easter morning finding the body of Jesus missing. And she's confused and she's hurt and she's not rejoicing at this time. She's weeping. She's weeping because she is confused about what had happened and what was going on. And I guess she thought the worst. Instead of thinking, well, Jesus has risen from the grave, like he said, she thought, well, they've taken his body. Isn't it like us sometimes to think the worst? And it's so easy to do because we only hear the worst sometimes. When you turn on the news, it's enough to drive you crazy because all you hear is the bad news. And very seldom do you hear the good news. And so we find ourselves in a strange land today. I think it's one of those uh, times where words aren't always adequate to try to take away the stress. And, and as a chaplain, I, I spend a lot of time these days trying to help staff and to support them. But sometimes you just feel like words are not enough. And I think about Mary at the tomb that Easter morning. What if we could go back in time and we could stand beside of Mary and what if we could say to her, Mary, if you knew what I knew now, if you only knew what I know now, you wouldn't be weeping. You'd be rejoicing. But I kind of feel like that even if we could do that, those words would roll off of Mary's back sort of like rain off of a metal roof. Because Mary, at that moment, was in great stress. 
And there are times when words are not enough. I was talking to another chaplain one day, and he had had an experience that most all of us have had, or at least in the pastor or chaplaincy. And he went to a room where a patient had died. And outside was a lady, a young lady crying. And it was her mother who passed away. And so the chaplain says to this young lady, as she's crying and very distressed, it's okay. And she looks at him and says, it's not okay. It's not okay. And he said that he really hadn't got a chance to finish his sentence that he wanted to say, and what he intended to say was, it's okay to cry. But before he could get that out, she was already in distress, and, uh, and he felt very bad about that. But at the same time, we've been in those situations before where it feels like the bottom has dropped out of our world. And some, someone comes along with some platitude or some scripture or some statement as if that's going to make all the hurt go away. And I thank God for comforting words and comforting prayers. But I preached a lot of funerals, I'll be honest with you. And I have yet to preach a funeral where I could get up and read a scripture or say anything that would make all the hurt go away. People still have to go through their time of grief. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't bring comfort. It does. The scriptures bring a lot of comfort. And I'm thankful for that, for the hope that we have in the scriptures. But while we're going through our struggles and while we're going through our time of distress, sometimes words are not enough. I have visited people in different situations as a chaplain in the hospital and as a pastor. And I will tell you that there's all kinds of different reactions that people have at the time of death. It's very interesting to me that there are some who will grieve in different ways, and some will cry, and some will scream. Some will be very composed and uh, do not show much emotion at all. And it's always been an interesting thing to me. And then I've even had families who sit around the bedside of a loved one who's dying or, or has died and laugh and tell jokes and talk about the person and talk about the things that they've done in their lives. And I think that's okay. There is no one size fits all to grief. In fact, I would imagine that when I die, that's going to be exactly what happens. <laughs> That there will be my family sitting around and laughing about all the crazy things that I've done in my life. And I can just see that now. And I'm okay with that. But I think about, uh, I'll give you an example of one that happened to me not long ago. I went camping. And people that know me well know that I have uh, things that happen while I'm camping and different things that uh, things seem to go wrong. Okay. So I'm out there in the woods, and I had backpacked and hiked in on Pine Mountain. It was a couple miles back in. And it was a nice night, but the wind began to pick up really bad. And when I left the house, I looked at the weather report, and it was supposed to be okay until the next day. But that changed. I guess I didn't watch WYMT or whatever. But uh, the weather changed, and when I looked at it on my phone, there was going to be a a terrible thunderstorm that was going to happen at like 5 o'clock in the morning. And I'm out there, me and my dog, Toby, and our little tent. And I'm like, I do not want to be out here in a bad thunderstorm. I can handle rain, but this is supposed to be a really bad thunderstorm. So I'm going to pack up tonight. And I called Sandy and said, I'm coming home tonight. So we packed up and started heading on our way. <clears throat> and then when I put my backpack on, I had my bear spray on the side, and uh, somehow the clip is missing. But my backpack hit my bear spray, and it sprayed out. Thankfully, it did not get in my eyes, but it went all over my arms and on my side. And I got to tell you something. Bear spray works. I don't know about bears, but it works on people. In fact, it's about 50 times hotter 
at least than regular pepper spray. If you don't believe me, try it out. Because as soon as I got that bear spray on me, I didn't waste any time. I had one bottle of water and I poured it and tried to get it off. And yet, uh, it took a few minutes, but it began to burn. And the more I walked and sweat out of trying to get out of that place to get to my vehicle, I had a couple miles hike with my backpack, the more it burned. And it began to spread. It started in my arm and spread in both my arms and my hands. I got to a stream and washed it the best I could. And it was some time before I got home that night and uh, was able to take a shower and use Don liquid soap and everything that we read that you're supposed to do. I did, but it burned for hours like I had been burned in a fire, I imagine. Until, you know, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning before I was able to go to sleep. And even the next day, my hands burned. It was a rough event. I want to tell you, it was not funny at the time that it happened. Not for me, anyway. Uh, but I can imagine that that's just one of the stories that will be told at my funeral. Uh, my funeral will be a bunch of jokes, probably. And that's okay. Because here's the thing. I know that people know me, and, and I, I think my family knows that I, when, when it's all said and done, that I've run the race, I've kept the faith, and I've finished my course. And I'm ready to go and to be with Jesus. And you know, there's a lot of benefits to laughter. I actually uh, was reading, doing some research on this, and I wanted to share uh, this with you. Just some of the benefits of laughter. <clears throat> um, one, uh, uh, laughter relaxes the whole body. It relaxes the whole body. Uh, it's good to relieve stress and even uh, helps your muscles. Number two, laughter boosts the immune system. Uh, it decreases stress hormones and increases good cells uh, like immune cells, infection, infection and fighting cells, which is good at this time. And so it improves your resistance to disease. Laugh, laugh. It's a good thing. And laughter triggers the release of endorphins in our body. Uh, it makes us feel good. And it can even temporarily relieve pain. Laughter protects the heart. Uh, it pr improves the function of blood vessels, increases blood flows. Uh, it can even protect against a heart attack and those things. Laughter burns calories. Did you know that? I mean, no, don't get me wrong. It's not going to replace the gym or, or, or you know, good exercise. Uh, but... They have found in studies that 10 to 15 minutes a day can burn approximately 40 calories, which, you know, can average a cup, about three or four pounds over the course of a year. So there you go. Uh, laughter lightens anger's heavy load. Think about it. When you're in the middle of, of a confrontation and someone can get you laughing, it can lighten the mood and kind of diffuse, diffuse everything. Also, laughter may even help you live longer. A study in Norway found that people with a strong sense of humor outlive those who don't laugh as much. Uh, and the difference was particularly noted for those battling cancer. And so laughter is a good thing. It's, it's good to relieve stress and it's good for you. I'm always amazed, uh, I've always been amazed at our hospital, especially our emergency department. When I first started working there as a chaplain, and we are a hospital who has traumas uh, quite often, and the chaplains respond to those as well to be there for the family. And I would go down to the ER waiting for the trauma to come in, and they would be laughing and joking and talking as if it was just another day. And at first that was a little, I was a little taken back by that. It's like, you know, I was thinking they would be stressed out. And, and, you know, if you watch them on TV, those doctor shows and stuff, they're all freaking out and everything. But most of the time, that's not what happens, at least not in our hospital. And what I found and what I figured out is that they have found, that they have found a way to release the stress of their job by laughing. And so, you know, the old saying is you either laugh or cry. And they're able to to laugh and to bond with one another to where when these times do happen that they are able to do their job and do it effectively. It's not that they're minimizing anyone's pain and not that they're laughing at anyone, 
But that they have learned how to relieve their stress. And I believe that's important for all of us today to be able to do, to relieve our stress. And, and if there is a day, if there ever was a day that we should be able to laugh, it's Easter. If there ever was a time that we should be able to rejoice, it's Easter. Because Jesus has risen from the dead. Listen, Jesus stood on the other side of the grave. And he said, I have the keys of death and hell, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Rejoice. Jesus laughed at the very face of death. And I believe it's appropriate for us to stand up and to laugh and to praise God and have joy. This is the joy of Easter, that Jesus has risen from the grave. And because he lives, I can live also. Thank God for Jesus and thank God for His wonderful promise of tomorrow. And I believe that all of us can understand the importance of just rejoicing in the good things of God. There never was and probably never be a time until Christ comes back when everything in our lives will be perfect and everything in our world. There will always be people that are hurting and people that are dying. Right now it's, it's on the news a lot more. But there will always be that. And so lean into your faith today and into the joy of Easter today and laugh. If you need to cry, cry to Jesus. But don't be afraid to smile when you see people. Don't be afraid to laugh. And don't be afraid to have joy because Jesus is alive. Amen. We're going to get a song. We're going to ask the musicians to come at this time, if you would. And we just want to remind you that we are available if you need to talk. But we want you to, uh, to know that Christ loves you, and we love you, and we're here for you. And if the Lord uh, speaks to your heart today... Be willing to hear that still small voice and to say, yes, Jesus, come into my heart and come into my life. As we sing, you can pray that prayer. Just a simple prayer that says, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. Would you pray that today as we sing?